Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Are you tired of being underpowered in Destiny 2? Do you want to unleash pure mayhem that obliterate enemies within a moment's notice? Well, today, I'm super excited to share with you a Warlock build that's been tearing up in all content. And yes, it's all about the Threadlings. This build is an absolute powerhouse, capable of obliterating even the toughest foes with ease. And I just can't wait to dive in and show you what it's all about. If you're a fan of these Swarmers boots, then this prismatic version is going to get you heavily invested. Start with the general aim and the exotic of the build. Our aim is to make sure we are able to maximize the large usage of Threadlings that will not only take down enemies, but also provide unraveling for additional damage and debuffs. We also need to showcase why this specific choosing is the right one for everyone to pick. For this, we will be using Swarmers and Berry Bloodline. Starting with Swarmers with his exotic effect, Swarmers, it states, Destroying a Tangle spawns a Threadling. Your Threadlings unravel targets that they damage. One of the best Warlock exotics to use if you ever use Strand or Threadlings, with the following applied to our build, it's going to allow us to spread the unraveling effect far and wide, and apply additional damage over time. This is handy as it can trigger faster of coverage and provide a constant 10% debuff towards targets if you use your light abilities. Now pair this with a weapon that can create more Threadlings on the spot and you'll be 50% done with the build. Our second exotic is Berry Bloodline with his exotic effect Hungering Quarrel which states Double fires tracking bolts. Landing bolts leeches health from the target. The following is being used for the devour effect it provides as we won't be using the Feed the Void aspect within the current build. With the high usage of Threading Grenades, this will be handy as it means we can use Weaver's Call and Hellion at all times and still get the health regen slash grenade regen once the Devour is available. However, this is not a weapon that everyone can get as it requires users to complete a specific dungeon to get the chance of it to drop. This means you have two options. You can either add in Feed the Void back to your aspect while removing another one or look for a weapon that has Demolitionist available as it will be needed for getting grenades back faster. The Ogma PR6 is a nice one to get as it's a pulse rifle, can drop as a wall drop or through engrams, has demo on it, free to play players can get it, and it will open up your exotic slot for whatever you want to add on next. For aspects and fragments we have the following. Weaver's Call where activating your class ability will produce Threadlings and attack nearby targets. Helion where activating your class ability will produce a solo mortar that will lob flaming projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. A facet of coverage, where your light abilities deal increased damage to targets afflicted with darkness debuff. A facet of solitude, where landing rapid precision hits emits a seven blast that reduces enemies damage output. A facet of hope, where while having an elemental buff, your class ability regenerates faster. A facet of balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants mini energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. A facet of purpose where collecting orbs of power will grant you an elemental buff based on the super you have. And a facet of protection where while surrounded, you're more resistant to incoming attacks. With the aspect, grenade and now super all being threading based, where you go with your fragments can lead to a number of areas for you to explore. For example, having a facet of courage and solitude is going to be a straight debuff to anyone caught by us which makes this build perfect for solo and endgame activities. A facet of hope and purpose will benefit our two aspects without the need of investing heavily into the recovery stats. A facet of balance will be doing its own thing and facet of protection will make sure we are tanky enough to survive lethal hits, which pairs well with devour on hand. This might be different to what you want to go with, but as explained, it's going to be a constant benefit to support some of fragments from one fragment to another. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority. I advise you fully invest as much as you can into discipline if you don't have buried blood and available. Resilience, we have ours at a tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. This mods are highly recommended since the barrel on the hand is only achievable for a few people. If not, then the cookers of damn mods are also working them to use. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 1 second cooldown via threading grenades. This is the only grenade to be used in the build and is quite powerful to equip, even without the strand-based threading grenade buff fragment. As everyone can achieve this, 
You could easily switch to your given mods, which will interact with some other key abilities we have. Impact induction times 1 for a 12% grenade regen. Bolstering destination for a 12% class ability regen. Momentum transfer times 1 for a 12% mini buff. Orbs of restoration for a 10% buff. A bomber for a 12%. And distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. The additional mods which are highly recommended were the following Strand Siphon for creating orbs of power via matching strand weapon. Charged up times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stacks we carry. A strand weapon surge times 1 for a 10% weapon buff, although time 2 is also fine. And then lastly, heavy and special finder mods, reserves, and scavenger iron mods are highly recommended for the heavy and special we are using. As we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. The following combo is perfect when combined with Swarmers, as we can utilize the Fred Lincoln Swarm perk as much as we like. At the same time, this hand cannon is very under the radar for most players to use, so now is the perfect time to farm one and generally use it for endgame this season specifically. For free to play players, you can get the better Devil's hand cannon from Shaxx, which is Strand, and can also drop Fredling and Demolitionist as a perk combo. Heavy, we have Circular Logic with Hatching and Envious Assassin. Also, a really great machine gun that everyone should at least have on hand. It hits hard, it has great stats overall, has great damage, perks are really good, and there's something reliable that you can bring wherever you go. The free to play players, the Mercato 45 can be gotten as a world drop or opening engrams, and they also share similar perks that Circular also shares. So what makes the Fedlin build so special? Well, for starters, it's all about the gear. You're going to need a specific set of armor, weapons and mods to make the build work, like shown. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it, it's going to take some grinding and a bit of time to get everything you need. But trust me, it's all worth it with the right gear, fragments and mods applied, since with all these applied, you'll be able to unleash a torrent of damage that will leave even the toughest enemies reeling. Now I have covered what is needed and what can be generally changed. But truthfully, the build can be done without the swarmers available, as you do have a number of ways to create fillings on demand. You will however lose out on the benefits that swarmers provide, which is more threadlings and being able to apply unravel. This also affects the Zotto weapon currently being used, as I know not everyone can get this. However, we have stated what you can do instead, which should help out those who want an idea as to where they need to go to next. But honestly, don't just take my word for it. Take a look at some of the gameplay footage we have shown. As you can see, the Fedling build is an absolute beast on the battlefield. It is capable of taking down even the toughest enemies with ease. It has great resource management for applying the key strength of the build. Good at control, which is always important. And it's an absolute blast to play with. I mean, who doesn't love unleashing an army of tiny minions to do their bidding? It's like something out of a fantasy novel. And it's an absolute game changer for many Warlord players everywhere. So to recap, the threading build is all about unlocking the true potential or prismatic subclass with endless threadings available. With the right gear, mods and abilities, you'll be able to unleash a torrent of damage in short bursts from your weapons, fragments and aspects down to your super. It's an absolute must try for any war player looking to take the game to the very next level. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while you're here. Dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more additional content. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.